Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Alberto Bonilla. I am the marketing manager of the energy and environmental uh, area in, in at Technalia. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for your interest in this webinar about geochemical techniques for corrosion assessment that uh, we have organized. The lecture will be uh, the Dr. Jean-Baptiste Georgin. Jean-Baptiste is doctor in chemistry. He has a degree in chemistry at the University of uh, Savoia, a Master of Chemistry and Materials Engineering at the University de Quebec, and has received a doctorate in engineering and materials science from the Institut National Polytechnique de Toulouse. At this moment, he is working as researches in materials for harsh environments, harsh conditions in technology leading several projects related to corrosion. The webinar will involve a presentation, it's about uh, 45 minutes, followed by a question time of approximately 15 minutes. The questions can be made using the chat in the, in the, in the application, in the app, uh, in, any, in any time during uh, the presentation of Jean Baptiste. The, the questions will be answered when uh, the presentation was finished. Uh, for, for your information, we will upload uh, at the channel, uh, that we will upload the video related to this uh, webinar at the YouTube channel of Technalia. Uh, you will receive a link uh, to connect up to see this, this video. And, we'll, and without further ado, uh, I will uh, now give uh, Jean Baptiste the, the floor. Please, uh, Jean Baptiste. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Alberto, for the presentation. So I'm Jean Baptiste, and I'm going to talk about electrochemical techniques for for corrosion. So let's see a little bit how it's going to be uh, this webinar. So. Uh, first, uh, we will try to I will try to give you some some key to to understand electrochemical techniques and how we can apply them to to study corrosion. How we can how we can use them. Uh, we'll start first with uh, uh, some word about corrosion. Uh, it's important to to, to understand uh, a little bit that. And uh, we will see, I'm sorry, of that uh, some some basic principle of, of electrochemistry that is uh, a necessary path to uh, fully understand the the topic. And then we'll go to uh, the actual measurements, uh, electrochemical techniques that will be divided in in, in three uh, parts. The first part devoted to uh, static measurements, meaning uh, in this case uh, techniques involving. Uh, Continuous currents, uh, like potential dynamic curves, and 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 uh, other technique related to that. Is this uh, first part would be uh, let's say let's say more important because I think is uh, the first part to go to the understanding of of electrochemical techniques, and then we will see in in a much lighter way let's say uh, dynamic measurements uh, because. These techniques are important, even if uh, more complex to understand. So I will just give you an overview in this case of uh, two techniques, the electrochemical interspectroscopy spectroscopy and the electrochemical frequency modulation. And then I will give you some, some information about local measurements because we can uh, perform uh, uh, local electrochemistry to understand deeper uh, the processes. Uh, because electrochemistry and corrosion are very big, very wide um, uh, topics, uh, I will just focus on the most common uh, technique and counter. So probably I will not be exhaustive, that for sure, because it would be way too ambitious. But uh, uh, I will try to, to give you some hints about the, the common techniques. And we'll focus on metallic uh, alloys, meaning that we can use electrochemical techniques to assess uh, uh, more than just the corrosion of, of metallic alloy, for example, the behavior of coatings or these kind of things, but I will not enter uh, in much in this in this uh, case. So let's go for uh, some more about corrosion. 
uh, what is uh, corrosion? Uh, there is various definitions we can give to corrosion, but uh, let's say the most commonly accepted is that uh, uh, corrosion is, is, is an, an electrochemical reaction between a material and its environment. So it's important that uh, there is material and environment uh, that produce a lot of uh, its properties, meaning that uh, the material is used for a certain uh, purpose and because of this interaction is going to lose, lose its purpose. That can be a, a aesthetic aspect, a mechanical properties, um, uh, whatever property we, we could give to the, to, to, to the material. And for uh, metallic alloys or metals, uh, uh, there is a, a, a good uh, way to see corrosion, uh, citing Forbes, that is a, a famous um, a researcher that, that studied corrosion. Uh, corrosion is a phenomenon in which metals tend to go back to their original states, the way we can find them in nature. So in a way, it's the opposite of the extractive metallurgy meaning that we extract ore from, from, from the nature and we put a lot of energy and effort to uh, generate metal from this ore and corrosion tend to bring back these metals to the uh, um, whole uh, nature. So it's the opposite of the extractive metallurgy. And uh, this, uh, this is uh, very costly for the society as uh, we estimate that uh, the direct and indirect costs linked to damage due to corrosion are uh, between in a range between two and four percent of the gross domestic produce product of developed countries. So it's it's really high cost, and it's important to understand how a, a corrosion works and how we can mitigate or protect it, protect the material we are interested in. Uh, so here comes the, the point to uh, study corrosion. And for that, uh, one of the techniques, one of the possibility we have is to use electrochemistry. Uh, why we can use electrochemistry? Because as I mentioned before, uh, mainly a corrosion process occur in, in aqueous medium. Uh, so uh, in this case, we have at the surface of a material. Let me bring here the little pointer. Here we have, we have, we have a metal. Here we have a, our environment with the formation of, of a layer of natural solution at the surface, uh, meaning that a many corrosion process involve that when there is a, the metal uh, directly immersed in in in, in solution, but also in atmospheric corrosion where, for example, uh, the uh, uh, certain amount of, of relative humidity, let's say typically above 70% of relative humidity, this, which is very often, there is a mono a layers of uh, molecules of water uh, absorbed at the surface of the metal. So we have here also a, a, a aqueous corrosion. And in this case, uh, we see the apparition of a lot of microcells that are composed of anodes and cathodes. Uh, the anode is the area when we can see the oxidation. The oxidation is a change of a valence of a metal, meaning what we start from a metallic material, and this metallic material is going to lose an electron and generate ions that are going to dissolve uh, or uh, uh, form a corrosion product. And this electron cannot be uh, alone like that, so there is a counter reaction that is the, the uh, reduction that occurs at the cathode. And uh, in this case, a, 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 an oxidized material will be reduced by uh, uh, catching uh, electrons. So, uh, in the most common uh, uh, oxidants are oxygen that we can find everywhere in the air when the medium. The one that solution is neutral or alkaline, or it can be uh, the proton when uh, the medium is very acid, and in this case, we have the reaction involving 
uh, to proton to form uh, hydrogen. There is other form of uh, uh, oxidizer, uh, oxidizer that are usually uh, metal cations. Uh, in, in this case, we have cations in, 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 the, metal, in the medium that uh, are going to catch the electrons, or it can be more complex molecule, for example, uh, uh, chlorine or, or, or other other elements. Now, what happens when uh, we have an ideal metal, meaning in this case, I, I will consider as ideal a, a metal that doesn't have a surface defects, that could be a, a perfect monocrystal, uh, for example, immersed in an electrolyte is, is, is something quite uh, theoretic. And uh, uh, we immerse it. So, for example, like we do in, in, in this camp here, we have we have a, a, a sink that is immersed in in a aqueous solution, and we have the other side copper that is immersed in a aqueous solution, and they are not connected to it. What happened is there is an equilibrium that form between the metallic form and the ionic form. Uh, the the ionic form, depending on the metal, can be very, very little or more that it's, mm, this equilibrium is established. And we can uh, uh, define a potential uh, derivative from a, a thermodyn thermodynamic equation uh, that is uh, 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 can be calculated with the Nernst equation, this equation here. So I will avoid to uh, uh, give too much uh, uh, equation because I think it's not that difficult to, to, to find them in, in the literature. And uh, I think it's more important here to see uh, uh, more qualitative information that, that, than, than quantitative. But it's important to see the, the, the main one. Uh, here we, we, we can see in some case uh, 0.06 is because this, these terms are are constant, so we can be uh, for uh, temperature uh, standard and uh, uh, that's uh, usually room temperature. And uh, the Faraday constant is constant, the gas perfect gas constant, and, and uh, we can have this information. And we can see that we can calculate uh, the potential depending on the concentration. Uh, of the of, of the ions that are in, 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 in the dissolution, because in this case uh, the, the reduced part, which is for example the zinc here or the copper, is metallic, and in this case the activity is one. This R is activity. Activity is one for solvent and solid phase is equal to the uh, um, pressure uh, partial pressure when when it's a gas and uh, when it's a uh, dissolved ion, it's equal to the uh, concentration if and only if the uh, aqueous, dissolution, aqueous solution is sufficiently diluted, meaning that if the concentration of the ion is too much, we cannot use this approximation that activity is equal to the, to the concentration. We have to calculate actually the uh, real uh, activity. That is uh, another story and I will not mention it here. And if we if we look a little bit theoretically at this at this at this at this material, uh, uh, we can uh, see that we can uh, have different uh, potential between between the, the material. Some are uh, very negative, some are positive, and uh, one is zero here. Uh, this 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 scale is a relative scale. Meaning that we define at some point that one uh, reaction would be uh, zero by definition. That is the hydrogen uh, reaction, a proton uh, with uh, plus two electrons that give hydrogen, and the rest will be the rest of the, the of, of of these half cells. It's called half cells. Is going to be uh, uh, um, sorted uh, according to. Uh, uh, the difference of potential with uh, hydrogen. Some of these metal here that you can see here are usually the one that we can find 
in a metallic form in, in the uh, environment, the, the, the most uh, down here, that we are calling the most noble, and also all the other that are above that is in form, the form of all that means that this one stands to react less with the oxidal standards that are in the, the atmosphere or in the environment, or oxygen or other type of size. And these ones, they are quite, quite a lot. So that's why they are called active. Now let's, let's go back to, to the scheme of before and, and we close, we close this, this, this circuit. So in this case, we will see that there will be a new equilibrium occurring that is going to take account of both uh, sides of, of, the, of, of the cell. And in this case, one of the material will constant, constantly dissolve, that is the thing here, and another one will constantly reduce, meaning that all the ionic, the copper ions that are in the dissolution that we put uh, intentionally in the solution are going to form metallic copper at the surface of the material. And the electrons are going to travel from the zinc to the copper. That is typically a battery cell. Uh, uh, in this ideal case, we can, let's say, collect the electron and inject them here and, and, and measure potential. We can use this electron to, to make working a, a motor, for example. That is the pattern. And what happens is the material with the most negative potential becomes the anode, so it's going to dissolve and there will be uh, the oxidation. And the other one is going to be the cathode, is going to gain electrons and form metallic material. Uh, that is really uh, uh, important to see. That is the base of electrochemistry. So now let's, let's continue. And we can see that because it's not possible to measure just a half self, if, if I go back really quickly here, here, we are not able to measure directly the, pol the potential absolutely of this single part. That is only theoretical. We need to do that to measure a difference of potential. So here we could do all the material uh, uh, connected with all the other to, to measure the relative uh, the, the difference between the, the relative difference between each, each each materials, or we could choose just one as a reference that we did in here uh, using the uh, reference the hydrogen evolution as, as a reference and uh, uh, measuring the each each half cell of a metal in this in this uh, salt. Uh, to, to sort them from the uh, most novel or to the most active. So that shows that we could uh, measure uh, uh, the potential of uh, all cells if we have a reference electron, another half cells that is not going to influence our, our system, but of, of metal in, in the medium. And uh, uh, this is a reference electrode. A reference electrode is like a mini cell, a mini half cells, when there is a material that could be copper or silver or mercury or uh, there is various type in its salt. For example, the, the copper in is uh, uh, in copper sulfate, the silver in silver chloride the mercury in calomel, that is this uh, uh, chloride uh, um, salt of the mercury. And that is immersed in a medium that is controlled. So uh, we have always, we know the potential, uh, we know that that is, is going to keep a constant potential and connected to the medium that we want to measure and, and uh, the metal we want to measure the potential uh, through a, a porous uh, area that is allowed to permit the exchange of charges. So we'll again, we'll follow the change of charges, but we'll not have exchange of materials. Okay. So uh, if, if you look, I can show you some, 
some, some reference electrode. I have some with me. I hope you can see it well. This is uh, this electrode, a copper copper sulfate uh, electrode. You can see it's, it's quite massive. This kind of electrode are usually used to do measurements in the fields. Uh, they are robust and, 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 and fairly convenient to use. Uh, in addition, uh, we tend to use uh, electrode that have a poten a potential compared to the uh, hydrogen electrode that is um, that is close to the system we want to measure. And the copper sulfate is copper copper sulfate electrode is, is quite convenient for field measurements. Then I have here another kind of, of electrode. Well, this is more a laboratory uh, uh, kind of electrode. You see it's in glass, it's more fragile. This one in particular is inserted in an accessory that is called a, a salt bridge. A bridge. Uh, and that allows to, to, to protect the electrodes and to be able to measure uh, uh, the potential very close to the samples we're interested in. This electron in particular, I'll try to show you better, is a silver silver chloride electrode. And uh, here we have at the bottom the uh, produce area. And inside there is a wire of uh, silver co co coated with a layer of uh, silver chloride. And inside there is an aqueous solution of saturated acid, uh, potassium chloride. So this is the kind of uh, reference electrode we use. And this is very important because if we want to be able to measure the potential of our uh, of the material of interest in, in a given medium, we need to use a reference electrode. Is the, the first one. So uh, it, it, it is quite a key point for, for, for electric field. As I mentioned before, we choose by definition the hydrogen electrode as the zero uh, uh, volt uh, electrode. So the, 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 the scale of, of of the potential uh, is defined by uh, uh, the standard hydrogen, what we call the standard hydrogen ele electrode that is often uh, short as SHE. Uh, I would like to uh, show you here something very important when it comes to uh, reading uh, electrochemical information. Uh, it's very important to always uh, refer to the, the uh, reference electrode that is used when a potential measurement is done, because like that, it's possible to uh, compare measurements. Without uh, the information of the uh, uh, reference that is used, it's impossible to compare measurements. And uh, there is here uh, some example uh, of of potential that are measured, uh, it's to be careful at the moment uh, to do the conversion from uh, one uh, uh, reference to another because it's the reference changing, so it's relatively and not the value that we are uh, displaying. It's the reference changing, so it's a bit uh, confusing at the moment to do the, the 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 conversion. Here there is some example of, for example, here we have zero volts our uh, assigned value for the standard hydrogen electron. We use, for example, a, a, a calomel electrode that is called ACL, standard calomel electrode, that has a potential of plus 0, 0 0.241 volts compared to the hydrogen electrode. And we have here, for example, the uh, silver silver chloride uh, reference electrode, in this case, not saturated with calcium, but with a certain amount of, uh, a certain concentration of calcium, but yes, in this case, it's, it's trimolar. And that is uh, at the potential of plus 0 0.197 millivolt. So if we have the point B here, this point B uh, measure with uh, the um, uh, here, uh, silver chloride uh, 
reference, this point B, will have a, 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 a potential of plus 0 0.033. But if we want to indicate it as a, a, a calomel, uh, as a reference using calomel to compare with the measurement that we've done with reference in using a calomel electrode, is now going to be minus 0 0.011. So it's not that we have to subtract or addition. We have to see really on the scale where the value is, is, is plotted because it's very easy to do, to do mistakes. So I wanted to um, uh, attract your interest <laughs> or your focus on, on this point that the, the kind of, of reference electrode that is used is very important to mention, to use, to mention what is, is used. Now, uh, before I was uh, uh, putting myself in the ideal case uh, that uh, uh, of, of, of a pure of a ideal electrode. Now let's let's go to real real electrode. In this case, uh, uh, what happened is on the electrode itself because of the um, inhomogeneities at the surface, at the surface, that can be due to a lot of things, uh, we will see it later, uh, we have the creation of micro cells of anodic, uh, uh, composed of anodic and cathodic area on the electrode itself. So now we don't have a pure, um, uh, 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 a net potential, but we have a mixed potential that we can still use a, a net equation to, to to calculate. But it's important that this this one will depend a lot of the nature of the medium. So here, for example, we have the galvanic series in in the sea water. So we can see that we can calculate uh, the uh, potential of material, uh, different different kind of, of materials when they are immersed in the seawater, when the potential is measured with, with a reference electrode. Let's say in this case would be a silver silver chloride reference electrode and, and we will measure the, the difference. No, this, I mean, this one is with a saturated calomel, calomel uh, electrode. So it's, 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 it's each potential is uh, of material is, is going to have a certain amount. But to emphasize the point that is dependent to the medium, uh, we can see that all this material in, uh, with, with this is the galvanic series that we see before that is calculated with the uh, next equation of, of a metal in its salt. When we put in, in another medium, for example, uh, 0.1 HL, we see that the order between the material here are changing. And it's changing again when we change, we go to sodium chloride. And it's changing again when we go to uh, uh, sodium sulfate. And it changes again when we're going in, in, in that kind of medium, in, in uh, uh, sodium hydroxide. So uh, we have, it, it's to be careful here that a, a direct series a, of a metal in its sort is a very useful tool, but sometimes it's far from the reality because uh, the, 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 the medium is very important on the, on the, on, on the establishment of the potential of, of material. And measuring potential is a key point. Knowing the potential of our material is a key point in the electrochemical technology is giving us information to know if, if it, a, a material is more noble than another, to know which one is going to be the uh, oxidant and which one is going to be the, the, the reducer. So that is important. And I talk about a lot about potentials, but I didn't say so far anything about current. Uh, why did I mean I didn't, I didn't say anything about current because in in the first case we were mentioning 
uh, measurement of potential. How we measure the potential? Uh, we have a, a sample. Uh, let me show you a sample here. This is a, a metallic material. We take a, a medium. We put our trans electrode. We immerse both in, in the medium and we use multimeter, for example, to measure the potential. Between the reference electrode and, uh, and, and, uh, and our sample, there is no current flowing because the, 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 the multimeter for to measure the potential has a very, very high impedance. That's the point that the, the way potential are measured. So uh, there is no current flowing there. So uh, uh, there is in theory no current escaping from, from, from this sample, but we know that there is corrosion. So there is exchange of, of, of electrons between the anodic and the cathodic part of the of the set of the of the sample of the magnetic material. So there is when we measure we do just this measure of potential, no global current. But that doesn't mean that there is no current. There is actually current, but the anodic current is equal to the inverse of the cathodic current. And this current is existing. And the, 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 the interesting point here is if we are able at the corrosion potential, meaning the potential that the natural potential of the material in, 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 in the medium, to know if we know one of these two, because they are equal, we could know how much electron are involved in, in, in the reaction. And if we know how much electron are involved, we should be able to calculate the amount of material dissolved and test the corrosion rate. That is a very useful information when we are uh, 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 trying to study corrosion. So we have to find a way to be able to extract one of these two corrosion. Now we can see another thing. Uh, now we were just leaving the material alone in the in the medium without just leaving him getting an equilibrium with the medium. Now what happens if with an external action we artificially move this potential? We, there is various way to do it. We could for example, in, in, impose a current to, to force a reaction, or we could connect the material to an, another electrode. For example, uh, uh, if we have here uh, steel samples and we connect it to a copper sample, uh, one is going to become the anodes and the other will become the cathodes. And uh, we could also, for example, they, in this case, they still will become the anodes. And we could also connect the, the steel to, in another experiment, two things. And in this case, the anode would be the cathode. And we would force a reaction anodic or cathodic. Uh, uh, that is like imposing a positive or a negative core. So uh, uh, when we, we force this, 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 this movement of, of potential, we say that the electron is polarized. And uh, and this polarization can, 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 can be also done by resistance, why I mentioned before, with, with an electrical current. We could also find a way to change uh, the concentration of the electrolyte, of the element of the electrolyte at the surface of the material. Or uh, uh, we could activate the, the, the anyway, in this case, the for the for the cool, for the um, for the electron itself, the global current will be different than zero. So let's try to do that for our material. So we we um, need for that two things. 
a, a, something that is going to uh, move the potential and measure the current uh, generated. And that is what we call a potential start guarantee. Potential start meaning that it can, this, this tool can work in, in, in imposing potential and measuring currents. It is the potential start path, potential static mode. And there is the balance no start path. That is the opposite, that we impose the current and we measure the change of potential. In most of the case, uh, we tend to use the potential static mode because it's easier to uh, uh, work in this way. Uh, uh, it's possible in some specific case, like uh, that uh, the Galvano start mode is, is useful, uh, is very useful. So both are important, but most of the, I would say, I would say all the modern equipments are potential start and Galvano start. And for that we did, and for, to, do, to do the measurements in our uh, cell, uh, we need a, a sample that is the material we are interested in to study its corrosion behavior. And we are going to call it working electrode because we are going to work on it. Then we will have to measure the potential. If we want to, in, to, to displace the potential of the sample, we need to measure the potential. So we need a reference electrode. And because in this case, will have globally on the electrode a current different than zero. If we want to do that, we need to collect these electron electrons or to generate the, the deficit of electron. And for that, we need a counter electrode. Counter electrode uh, is an electrode when we'll do the counter reaction. So uh, to to loop the circuit. We cannot just generate electrons like that without taking care of them. We will need to collect them in, in, in another electrode. And the, the typical counter electrode is like that, a platinum mesh. Why a platinum mesh? Because to be a good counter electrode, we need to, uh, there is some requirements. This uh, counter electrode should never limit the reaction. We want the reaction to be limited by what happened on the working electrode because it's what we are studying. So to avoid to be limited by the counter electrode, we, uh, a, we need to have a counter electrode that has a surface, an area higher than our working electrode. So we are not limited uh, by the point generated. And we need the counter electrode made of a metal that is not going on the material that is not going to uh, corrode in most of the uh, environment and that also uh, that is also a catalyzer of uh, uh, the gassing reaction meaning that uh, we don't want the counter electron to corrode so for that a noble material is very good and so is very good and um, um, we need, if there is a gas reaction, for example, the reduction of the proton in hydrogen or electrolysis of the water, we need to uh, catalyze this reaction, not to be limited by the reaction. So that makes platinum a very, very good uh, a material for counteractor. The point is platinum is very expensive, so it's working well in laboratory when we are doing exploratory measurements and this kind of things. But sometimes like cheaper uh, counter electrodes are as efficient when we know that we don't have gas evolution for example, this kind of things or limited gas evolution. We can use a, a, this kind of graphite counter electrode that uh, have a very high uh, superficie uh, compared to the sample and that's working very well also. So let's re record our uh, uh, let's record our uh, potential uh, curve, and we will get, end up with this kind of things. With here our current and there our potential. For the current, it's important to say that the important value 
is not the current itself in ampere, but is the current density which uh, take account of the surface of the uh, of the exposed surface of the sample. That is important point. Otherwise, we cannot compare a measurement, uh, and that that's that's quite. Important. Then we end up with this kind of things. With we can see here in this part the negative current and and and, and negative value of of the potential here is going to be the cathodic part. Then at some point will cross will cross the the the, the zero value for the current. Uh, we saw before that that is is the uh, potential uh, of corrosion. And then we are going to positive currents. And here is the anodic part where we have the dissolution of the of the material right, or the formation of the corrosion flow. And we can see that we can see much we can see that well the things so there is another representation that is more convenient is to put uh, the current in an logarithmic scale but that means that this part because we cannot do the logarithm of a negative uh, value this part is going to pass in the positive area in this case we we'll have this kind of shape with here we can see our uh, cathodic area here we are going to very, very, very low value. Here, this part is, if we are in the linear scale, is going to be negative. And we are going to very low value, pass zero, and go to the positive. And this shape is, you see that in, in, in locality value, change completely. So, uh, what we can take out from that? First, uh, last things. Sometimes we, you will see curves like that with the uh, current in, in ordinate and potential uh, in ordinate and, and potential analysis and sometimes the opposite it's just because there is two different conventions one that would call European or American but that is like kind of a shortcut it's not exactly like that but uh, it depends a lot uh, uh, the the industry involved in in, in, in the, the kind of representation for example the oil and gas sector tend to give this kind of representation of of the polarization curves and oil and gas sector are using is using a lot of electrochemistry to assess corrosion on uh, uh, whatever asset tubings uh, etc and uh, in other case is this representation that for me is a bit more logical because we tend to put in abscess the value that we impose and in ordinate the value that we measure. So uh, because most of the time we work in potential static mode, we impose the potential, so we sweep the potential and we measure the points. We can see in these areas here mainly, that is, is, is something a bit different, but let's say, we could see in this area that there is a part in the logarithmic that is quasi linear. That's interesting. That was uh, um, be, uh, uh, identified by, by, by Tafel. We call it Tafel behavior. And it's, it's quite interesting uh, uh, information. Now, let's take an example. So when we, we, have, we have material in, in in, in immersion in the medium, like that. We know that at the, here is the, let's say, so-called American convention with, with the, the, the current here and, and the potential in this axis. When we have here our, our cathodic part and here our anodic part, we have this peak here that is going very low in, in current is the uh, corrosion potential, the, the natural potential of the, of the material in, in the medium. And we see that the current increase on each side. And we know that somewhere here, there is our uh, current of, of, of corrosion that we would like to extract. And here comes a very important equation for electrochemistry that is the butler Wonder equation. This one equation link here our over tension. Over tension is the difference between this value and 
a value that we choose far from a core. It links this value, the over tension, to the current density. That is very important. So we can see that here there is two uh, uh, um, coefficients. And if we put in the logarithmic scale and we are going to this point, so echo here, uh, we will be extract, able to extract this value that is the current, uh, the, our uh, value of interest. And to do that, we can fit the linear part of the anodic and the cathodic branch, and they should cross, if it's done well, at the potential of corrosion. And these two slopes here, they are called Tafel, tafel slopes. And with the Tafel slopes, we are able to calculate the current of corrosion. And once we have the current of corrosion, we can calculate the corrosion rate, knowing this value here, this one is quite easy, is the current of corrosion or the density of current. There is a factor of corrosion, the surface of the, ex the exposed surface of the sample, and there is this value, the electrochemical weight, that is telling us how much uh, uh, electron I need to uh, um, oxidize a certain amount of material. So this is quite interesting because once we are able to extract these two values and we know the property of our material, we can calculate the corrosion rate. Most in interesting. Uh, one more, more more work. Here in this case, we are polarizing far from the material, meaning that if we are going polarizing this direction and this direction, we are going to damage the material. So this is a destructive measurement. But if we look in this area, it's, able, it's, it's possible to rearrange the uh, Bacheronian equation and to reduce it to this value because we have based very little perturbation in this case. So we would do this kind of things, a very small polarization between something like minus 25 to 25 millivolts around the potential of corrosion. And we'll be extract also the corrosion rate, this time doing a non-destructive measurement. But we need to know the slopes of Tafel. So if it's a non-material mass in the known medium. So we did previously the experiments, it's, it's possible without any problem. But if it's a new material or a new medium, or a new combination of the, of the two, uh, it's necessary to, before perform a full polarization, to be able to extract this value. And that is given in this uh, uh, standards. Then, which kind of, of shape for the corrosion uh, uh, we will have. We will have of a purely activity uh, uh, potential um, uh, system, or we can have system with this kind of shape that are limited by the, uh, uh, by, there is a limit, a plateau here, that could be due, due to, in the anodic case, the formation of a protective layer, passive layer, that is some, some material developed uh, corrosion product that are well adherent and protective, and other that are uh, completely, uh, and other case where the limitation is due to the effect of diffusion. So uh, we can control diffusion using rotating techniques. I will not enter in the detail because I see that it starts to be late and I have to accelerate a little bit. Another important point, and if we go far in the anodic area, in the case of the passive material, so this material that generates these protective layers, we can see other interesting point. Meaning at some point we have a plateau, the current is limited and suddenly increase a lot. And that is usually the pitting potential. Pitting is a localized corrosion that can be very destructive because it progresses very quickly through a material. So we can generate perforation or this kind of thing. But to be sure that is pitting when the value reach high value of current, let's say typically uh, a five uh, 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 million, uh, 3 or 5 milliampere or something like that, we can 
reverse, meaning we can go back in potential, we can go back in potential in, in, in the, in, with, with the curve, and we can have two scenarios, or we go back exactly above the curves, and in this case, we know that our, uh, the material is able to passive it again, so it's just pseudo uh, uh, localized corrosion, and in this case, it's, it's not a problem. Or there is the formation of an hysteresis, meaning that even if we reverse the potential, the current continues to increase and decrease when we, the potential is much, much uh, uh, lower. And in this case, we have the propagation of the pitting inside the material, and this case is very dangerous. So this point, potential of picuration, and this point, potential of uh, protection, are very important value because they give us a, a good indication of the pitting resistance of a material. Even more, once we know this information, we can polarize the material in the passive region relatively close to the pitting potential without reaching it. And we can change the temperature of the bus, increase the temperature, because one point is that the uh, pitting is very dependent on the temperature, meaning when the uh, system is hot, it's more prone to pitting. And there is even a threshold that is called critical pitting uh, temperature, or CPT. And these critical pitting temperatures, we know that below the temperature, we will likely not have problem with uh, localized corrosion, but above the temperature, we will have. And by following the, the intensity of the current or the current density with the uh, uh, change of temperature at the potential that is on the, on the passive area, we can uh, uh, detect the uh, um, increase, strong increase of the current when uh, uh, the creating uh, um, temperature is overpassed. So it's very useful information, of course. And finally, about uh, polarization curves, I would say that uh, you can have some sign, uh, apparition of oddities like this one here. And when you can see this kind of curves with several peaks that can be really disturbing, is because there is usually competition with two kinds of uh, oxidant. For example, a, a has in medium at uh, high temperature, meaning uh, that the, the, there is a little bit of oxygen, but not much. Uh, in this case, there is competition between the, 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 the reduction of the oxygen and the reduction of the proton. So we have some area, there were some area that are, let's say, a, a cathodic, then an area that is anodic, and again, an area that is cathodic, and finally, the anodic part of the matter. So this can be a bit disturbing, but simple. it's good to know that it can exist. Now I finish with the, the static motion. I would like to present quickly some of uh, dynamic measurements. Dy dynamic measurements uh, are like a, a step further compared to the uh, uh, static measurements. In the polarization curves, one thing that I didn't mention yet is we are limited to the slowest process. So we see always the slowest process, meaning the activation when the activation is the li limiting process, the diffusion when the diffusion is the limiting process, but we cannot see together. Moreover, because it's continuous current uh, uh, um, technique, when there is a, a very uh, a resistive system, we cannot do measurements. It's, it's not adapted. So uh, 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 we can pass to go to other techniques. Uh, in the techniques that I'm going to present, that is electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, we are mainly interested in the corrosion, what happened at the corrosion potential. But we could do it at whatever potential we want. But the interest is the, the, the corrosion potential for corrosion purpose. And what we are going to do is to impose not a, a, a potential static, but a dynamic potential, like a semi waves, at a given frequency. And we measure the response in current. Exactly the same setup than before. What change is the potential start that is, let's say, a bit more involved and as a frequency generator and a frequency anal analyzer. In modern uh, equipment, let's say this, these two parts, this part and this part, they are linked together. And we will use something that is called transfer function. That we consider our system as a black box. We input 
a perturbation, we measure the, the response of the system, and we analyze that will give us inter, uh, information about what is inside. We, what we'll do is we calculate the impedance, that is the ratio between the potential and the current. Uh, if our system is linear, stationary, and causal, meaning that linear will input a small perturbation, stationary that is not going to evolve with the time, and causal that all the response is due to the perturbation, then we can analyze uh, uh, our system using the transfer function th theory. That is very, very useful. Uh, what we do usually is we work in potentiostatic mode, even if sometimes uh, we can use the uh, Galvan static, and we are going to uh, um, perturb our system with various frequencies that are going to high frequency, around 100 kilohertz, to low frequency, order of the millihertz. And we want to give a very small amplitude to our uh, perturbation. That means that impedance spectroscopy is non-destructive. So we can follow over the time the uh, uh, same sample. And we'll change frequency, and we'll measure here what happened. Here I put on the Nyquist plot uh, 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 the response. The Nyquist plot is a part that is imaginary and a part that is real. Imaginary because we are measuring two information, the amplitude, the variation for amplitude, and the diff and, and the phase shift of the two sine waves. So that means that we can calculate an energy path, that is the amplitude times the sinus of the of the uh, phase shift, and uh, a real path, that is the amplitude times the cosinus of the phase shift. And we are going to change frequency and measure another point, and change frequency, going lower on frequency, change another point, etc., up to the end, that is the polarization resistance, where we are likely very close to uh, 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 the uh, uh, polarization resistance that we measured before with the uh, uh, polarization resistance technique, the linear polarization technique that I presented. The good point is if we use this value, this resistance, that is the polarization resistance, we can also calculate our corrosion rate, but we need the Tafel slopes that uh, should be extracted with the polarization uh, curve that we uh, saw before. So, why to do that? You can tell me. It's because uh, we can extract a lot of information from a uh, impedance spectra. Here an example. This is an example of a, a impedance spectra that is plot in the Nyquist plot. So I told you before with the a, a, a imaginary part and the real part. Important in, in impedance for electrochemistry, we plot in the this axis the negative uh, value is, is minus imaginary and plus imaginary is down there, is down there. And the other side is another representation that is also very useful. It's the same information than here, but plotted in another way. That is the border plot when we can see the phase, the here the modulus of the the logarithm of the modulus of the impedance as a function of the frequency, and the other the phase shift as the uh, function of the logarithm of the frequency. Frequency. So here we can see that a peak here corresponds to a, a change of slope and corresponds here to a loop. So what we can do is we can build a model based on equivalent electrical circuit. Or here, I would say a big warning because we, could, we can fit whatever we want with an electrical equivalent circuit and fit whatever impedance spectra. Uh, in this case, the model I use is a, a, a model that is often used for coatings, for example, where we have a first uh, a, a resistance that is the electrolyte, a second system that is a combination between the capacitance and the resistance that is, uh, let's say, a porous layer at the, at the surface of the material, 
and a second system that is composed of uh, the surface of the material with the activation, the, let's say the, 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 the corrosion, the um, oxidation, and the second is a capacitor that represents the double layer. The double layer, I didn't mention it yet, is how the ion are organized at the surface, in the electrolyte at the surface of the material. The cations are usually well solvated in, in water because of the uh, um, doublet of electron at, at, uh, on the oxygen in the water that solvate well the cations, but ion, anions are not that well solvated and they, are, they can move a bit more freely. And when the surface of the material is polarized positively, the, uh, the anions come close to the surface. When the um, uh, surface is polarized negatively, the, the anions go far from the surface and the plaque act as a condensator and is called double layer. And the double layer is quite important in, in electrochemistry and it should be taken account of. So here the model is should be always always uh, based on a physical uh, information about the the our system our electro the electro that we're studying and when we have the model done we can adjust this value we can adjust this value to a, a extract parameter like that and from this parameter we can also uh, calculate interesting things. But let's say just for a visual example, here the example of the use of impedance. Here we can see, because it's not very destructive, we can follow samples over the time that is uh, organic coatings, and we can think that uh, going through a cycle of aging, uh, this coating is losing a lot of properties. Uh, this impedance diminishes a lot, so meaning that the, the barrier property of the coating are affected and is going uh, uh, to be much le less protective after eight cycles than that, that at the beginning. In another way, it's another coating with the same uh, aging condition, and we can see that the impedance didn't almost change with the time. So it's a very good way to compare our uh, evolved uh, systems, and for corrosion, for example, protective system is very, very useful. Another example here we can see uh, an alloy that uh, is, is immersed in, in aggressive solution. And it was suspected that adding a copper in the, in, the aliasha, in the alloy would improve corrosion properties. And in this case, we could see that with the time, without copper, it, it, the impedance diminished, meaning that the system is more and more active, it generates more and more current, it's, it's more active, so it's going to, to corrode more and more. And in the other case, with the time, the impedance is going to increase, meaning that the there is a passivation phenomenon and the material is going to uh, be um, uh, with a better behavior uh, uh, when, when the time in increase. So this is also a very good uh, tool to study system, but it's more complex to use. And a last point, the electrochemical frequency modulation. Uh, the, I will say just a word about that. What is that? Is a quick measurement when we impose a, 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 a two a cine waste couple together like that, and uh, we'll do, a, 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 we apply to the system, we measure the, a, the response in, in current, and we pass the information of potential and current in the, uh, with a, a, a fast Fourier transform to have a, the frequency spectrum. And the interesting point here is looking at this peak and the ratio between these peaks, we can calculate directly the corrosion current without the needs of uh, having the um, tapel slopes. So it's a very interesting measurement. Here is an example of a measurement that what we apply, what we measure, we pass all in the frequency domain. And here we can see that we can calculate the uh, current of, of corrosion. That is a very interesting technique when uh, uh, we cannot do a polarization to extract the tafel slopes. So, a, a last point, local measurements. Uh, I mentioned, I didn't emphasize too much, but uh, uh, the microstructure and the stereophysics are very, very, very important 
uh, for uh, the corrosion mechanism. So uh, it would be very nice to be able to measure locally uh, uh, the electrochemical behavior of, of a material. And that's possible. It exists various techniques. Let's say there is two groups. One that is, as, as, as I know, one representant is the microcapillary technique. In this case, the, the, the strategy is to diminish the size of the cell. So the microcapillary is usually mounted in this kind of setup. So we have a microscope so we can check a, a spot a interesting place on, on the sample. And we, we turn the objective and we have our microcapillary cells. We see the capillary and we go to put it in contact with the system. And inside there is an electrolyte, a counter electrode and a reference electrode. And we can connect that to a potential stat and do a classical experiment. Could be polarization curve or a, a impedance spectroscopy on a single spot. And we can go quite low. There is a microcapillary that goes to 10 to 20 microns. So we can measure single grains, for example, in an alloy. That is a very interesting. But we can study coppers. There is other techniques like a, a, a local electrochemical impedance spectroscopy or a scanning vibrating electrical, electrochemical technique like LRES or, or VET that are uh, scanning techniques, meaning that we have a full sample in, this, in the solution and we are going to scan a probe at the surface to detect variation. That is very relevant when there is coupling. Uh, in the case of the impedance spectroscopy, the point is to measure uh, the local current uh, with, with a microprobe that is static. So there is usually several uh, points uh, and with the, the difference, the home law and the difference of potential, we can extract the local current and calculate the local impedance. With the a little bit different, there is a probe that is going to vibrate and uh, in two dimension, meaning doing like little ellipses. And uh, this probe vibrating is moved around the, sam the sample and is going to collect the current uh, uh, over the samples. And like that, we can do a map of current, anodic or cathodic, over the sample. Uh, both techniques, let's say, are their advantage and their inconvenience. The LIS is, is like, let's say, we don't uh, agitate so much the, the, the electrolyte, but the, the measurement is quite delicate to do. And um, the, the analysis is quite tricky after. And in the case of the scanning vibrating electrode, the, the vibration of this electrode agitate a little bit the, the medium and, and let's say, uh, bias a little bit the measurements, but gives a lot of other information, meaning that we, we identify very quickly what are the cathodic and the aric areas, because we can see the sign of the current and uh, the integration of the current can be quite accurate. So that is also very interesting techniques. And there is a last interesting technique that is the scanning electrochemical microscopy. In this case, not only we are polarizing our sample at the potential that we want for a bomb to do, to, to, to do um, a measurement, but we can also polarize the microprobes. And in this case, there is various mode of working, but we can uh, measure just, let's say, the diffusion of, of a support, so a solution with a mediator. The mediator is an element that is going to be oxidized and reduced. So this mediator can diffuse here to the surface between it can be oxidized and then uh, at, at, that can be reduced at, at, at the microprobe. And when we move close to the surface, the, the diffusion process changes, the current changes. And because of that, we know if we are more or less close to the surface. So we can do a topological mapping of the surface. And when that is done, we can change the mode and work in other modes that could be a positive feedback or negative feedback. In this case, uh, we can detect with uh, the system if there is, uh, uh, for example, presence of a specific ion. So we can uh, polarize negatively the, the sample to generate the, the solution. And 
a scan with the with the probe and the probe is set up in a way that is going to oxidize only for example uh, iron uh, um, ions and like that we'll be able to map to map uh, uh, the place where uh, iron sample uh, ions are located because the current is going to be affected by this this reaction so this is a very interesting technique but here also it requires a lot of uh, experience from the operator and a lot of, of uh, uh, work for the data treatment. So local uh, uh, techniques, they are very interesting because they give more information, but it's not necessary to go, to go systematically at local techniques because sometimes it can be more confusing than uh, anything else. And I think I, I quite overpass the time and I'm, I'm going to, to stop here. Uh, thank you very much and for your attention and please uh, um, thank, uh, thank, thank, thank you very uh, much Alberto uh, I'm, I'm ready for the questions thank you very much uh, Jean Baptiste for this interesting presentation uh, we have we have two questions two questions for you uh, first first of all uh, is in reference to the of the uh, using the reference electrodes is uh, what happens at high temperature is higher than the 200 degrees if uh, we cannot use the reference electrodes that you have mentioned uh, I uh, have friends with what wait a moment that uh, the, the question continues it has oh. it I had problems with the reference electrode stability in aggressive environments as carbonate or chloride salts. What is your recommendation? Um, uh, first is high temperature, no? High temperature, higher than 300 degrees. Oh, uh, that's, that's very high. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's very high. Uh, that's problematic. See, uh, here I mentioned only uh, let's say electrochemical techniques in a cold solution. So you can imagine that above 100 degrees, we start to have problems. Uh, most of the, the reference electrodes, they are not done to work above, let's say, 80 degrees. Uh, 80, 85 is, is the limit. Uh, even at, at this temperature, I would uh, install a salt bridge like, like, like this one, but let's say, like this concept, but to delocalize more the reference electrode to uh, avoid that, that this is re reference is exposed to high temperature. So uh, one point, but I am not sure it's possible, is to try to delocalize the, the reference electrode. Uh, uh, in some case, uh, it's the case, of, for example, here in Technalia, we have a, a a specific setup to work in higher temperature. So we have protoclaves uh, when we can uh, install samples and perform electrochemical measurement in the autoclave. You see, because the autoclave is, is sealed, uh, we can raise the temperature uh, above the 100 degree where the electrolyte is not going to boil, the pressure is going to increase, so the, the electrolyte is not going to boil, and we can perform uh, electrochemical measurement at higher temperature. Uh, but that requires like specific uh, reference electrode done for that. And we have also to correct the potential of the electrode because this potential is going to be strongly shifted due to temperature effects. If we want, if we want to compare to other uh, measurements, we have to take that, that in account to be able after to go back to a uh, comparison with the standard hydrogen electrode. Now, Se uh, se second part of the question was in relation with the electrode stability in aggressive environments as carbonate, carbonates or chloride salts. Yes, uh, uh, it, uh, um, I would imagine, okay, I, for me it's not that clear if the question is related to also this, this problem uh, at, at 300 degrees or is uh, 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 other point. Let's say that um, I would try to uh, uh, avoid to have the electrode, reference electrode in contact with the aggressive environment, in this case, to protect the, 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 the electrode. And I think the best is to install a, a, a bridge. Uh, 
to limit the problem. But for example, if this this is kind kind of experiment done in in molten salt or uh, I don't know in, in autoclave, it's, it's not necessarily easy. Uh, but if it's if it's an option, I would definitely try that. It would involve uh, 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 in the measurement a little bit less accurate, meaning that we have we can increase the distance between the between the reference electrode and and the sample, so we can increase the ohmic drop, but it would limit the problem with the instabilities. Another option is I don't know if it's also possible in the specific case is not to use a reference electrode, but to use a pseudo reference, meaning that uh, choosing a metal of often we can use platinum as pseudo reference and and we know that there will be a little shift in potential, but instead of having a complex reference electrode with a, a, a body inside a, um, an electrolyte uh, to the, the material itself, we just have a wire of platinum and we use it as pseudo reference. That's in another way to limit the problem. The, the measure is less accurate. It's not able to handle like a full polarization because uh, far polarizing far from from the, the, the capacity of the, the electrode is going to affect the, 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 the reference electrode is going to be affected. But it's, it's a way also to, to, to solve the problem, to use a pseudo reference. OK, and the last question is in reference to the, what kind of information related to corrosion behavior can be obtained from both plots? Uh, both plots uh, is, let's say, uh, in, in the impedance, we can represent the impedance spectra with two, with several, actually. There is various ways to represent the impedance spectra. But the most common, they are the liquid plot and the border plot. They are exactly the, the same things, meaning that if a fitting uh, with uh, electrical equivalent circuit is working for the Nyquist, it's going to work for the body plot also. Uh, uh, the body plot is just another way to represent uh, um, impedance. Spectrum. Now, uh, before going to, to, to complex model and trying to fit, etc. That, that can be time requirement because we have to find an accurate model uh, that is going to fit and is going to have a, a physical a signification. And uh, it's, it's quite difficult, but we can do like qualitative analysis. Let me go back to, to a, a body plot. This is a body plot. Here we have a body plot. Uh, we can see here that we have a plateau here. This plateau that corresponds here to a zero phase shift, zero degree phase shift, is going to be the uh, resistance of electrolyte. Then here we can see that there is a second plateau with a slope, okay, that is, is correspond here. This slope corresponds to this peak in the phase shift. And a second plateau, and here we have we are going back again to 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 something close to zero. That is a resistance also. That is 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 going to be in this case the resistance of this this semicircle. That if it's for example a porous material on top of a, of a metallic material is going to be the characteristic of the material. And then we have. A, another plateau here that is going to correspond to, to this this value here and when when we have a zero pitch. The interesting point here and if you look the impedance that is could be here or here in the body plot uh, at low frequency this is the sum of everything that happened in in the system. Okay everything that happened in the system and at low frequency here we will have a good idea of the general behavior from a corrosion point of view of the uh, system, of the, of the uh, electrode that we are studying. Is, if its value is very high, uh, it's going to be a very resistive system, so with a very poor activity, so a very good corrosion behavior. And if it's going to be low, it's going to be a very active material. 
So let's say this example, if we I go back to the example I, I show late after, we can see in this case that is a nude alloy that is not designed to go in very harsh environment, but needs to have a little bit of let's say corrosion resistance. We have value around, let's say, that is liquid, but if, if we, we we look at, at this this value, around a 10, 10 to the 4 uh, ohm centimeter square. That is not that low, let's say like uh, active steel can be uh, 200, active zinc can be uh, 100 ohm, so very, very low value. This is not, not that low, but it's not high. And now let's see this one. In this case, we have borders. So this one. if we look at here low frequency, we have something at 10 to the 10. So more than gigaohms. So that is very easy. Even more here, we see that we are just in, 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 in Ohms. We are not in ohm centimeter square. Ohm centimeter square should be the, the value to have to be able to compare with other things. This is a measurement I, I, I did, so I know that uh, we have like something like close to 10 centimeter square value, so we can add one order of magnitude to compare to, to these values. So this is a very, very resistive system, which is, makes sense because it is actually a, a, a marine uh, coating system with a primer, uh, a, a primer layer of uh, top layer or top coat, uh, and it's done to be very good and uh, resist in very harsh environment. This one is actually uh, close to 10 to the 12. So this is very, very resistive material. This is like something not that high, but not that low. And if we would see an impedance spectroscopy of, of zinc, for example, it could be very, very low. So uh, that is the, the first uh, things that we can extract from, from the body. We can see also if there is just one, for example, like this one, or various variation. Here we can see that there is various variations. So something, things happens. And in coating, what happens typically, for example, in this case, is that water is going inside and water has specific property uh, actually is, is called the electric uh, permittivity so the electric permittivity of the water is very high compared to the electric permittivity of of, of polymers and the the penetration of water is going to affect a lot the associated capacitance to to the to the to the coating so we can see very clearly when water is entering, and we can even calculate how much water enters inside the material if we know the thickness at the moment of the measurement. So that's also very interesting information. So we can extract quite a lot of things from impedance when uh, we start to uh, treat the data seriously. Uh, I hope I, I reply uh, well to, to the question. Uh, is there other question, Alberto? Alberto? Um, sorry, I, I don't have news from 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 Alberto. Thank you very much again, uh, Jan Baptiste. You, he has no more questions. We fin we finish here their webinar about the electrochemical techniques for corrosion assessment. And I remember you, and I remember the audience that uh, you can contact to Jan Baptiste Yorsin using the email you have or the phone number you have, the, the, that you have on the presentation. And we thank the, the audience the, again for the interest in this in this uh, webinar and we hope to meet to meet you again uh, in relation and uh, in our own other other uh, other interesting interesting subjects. Thank you. Thank you very much everybody and have, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye.